For more analysis, let's bring in the founder and executive director of the National Security Institute, Jamil Jaffer. It is great to see you. So I think the first question on a lot of people's minds is this isn't a random act. It must be a consensus that the U.S. needs this type of firepower. Tom outlined uh, some of those needs in his report. What do you believe are the biggest threats this new weapon is working to ward against? And what do you make of the timing of this announcement as well? Well, Kelly, obviously a few things going on here. One, we have ongoing wars uh, with Russia invading Ukraine. We've got the war between Israel and Hamas and a long-standing threat from nations like Russia and China that have been long challengers to the United States, not to mention North Korea uh, as well. Uh, you know, the Russians have the largest number of nuclear weapons, about 6,000 warheads. We have about 5,200. The Chinese have a few hundred, although they're tripling, the, they're tripling their, uh, their nuclear base in size over the next few years. The purpose for this particular weapon is to replace an older weapon that's already in the inventory and that's aging out. So we need new capability in order to continue uh, to have the nuclear capability that we have today. So in a lot of ways, this doesn't increase our stockpile. It simply modernizes one part of it, the B-617 for this new, more precise B-6113 weapon. That's about the same size, Kelly. So the Pentagon has confirmed there's been at least 25 attacks on U.S. forces in the Middle East since the Gaza war began. Um, is this move an act to show emboldened countries like Iran, Russia, and China that the U.S. won't back down from this arms race? Well, look, I think, I think we want to be clear with the Iranians who are behind these attacks on American forces. We're going to treat your attacks on our forces by your proxy forces as attacks by you. Now, we haven't done that quite yet. Uh, the Trump administration did that when they took out Qasem Soleimani. Uh, demonstrating that we ha continue to have nuclear capability. We have the B-21 Raider there that's on the screen um, that will be carrying this new weapon. Uh, certainly demonstrates to all of our adversaries that we have and are going to continue to have these nuclear capabilities. Uh, but the more important point right now, Kelly, to your issue, your, to the point you've raised, is that we've got to demonstrate we're going to hold Iran accountable for conducting attacks on American soldiers, which they've been doing for years. So we are talking about quite a bit of firepower as outlined. What are the scenarios where you see a bomb like this potentially being detonated? Well, it's a very unusual scenario, obviously. We haven't uh, detonated a nuclear weapon uh, at, in, in anger uh, since the two bombs that were dropped on Japan that ended World War II. Um, but, of course, uh, you know, there's a possibility um, of a tactical nuclear conflict that people have raised with Russia and Ukraine. That hasn't happened. That's something, obviously, we um, and all, you know, sane people want to avoid. There is no benefit to tactical nuclear exchange, much less a large-scale strategic exchange. But the way to ensure that, Kelly, is to ensure that new nations don't get this capability, like Iran, who have long been on the path to get nuclear weapons that want to use them, and the nations that do have them that are bad actors, like North Korea, are taking those weapons down and are willing to give those up. That's something, something we've been able to achieve thus yet, thus far, but that's an important part of this effort as well, Kelly. That certainly is. All right, Jamil Jaffer, thank you as always. Thanks for having me.